in 2015, the Sustainable Development Goals were adopted. So let's examine in this chapter what achieving global public health implies through the principles that the SDG goals embodied in their framework. The three key principles were economic prosperity, social inclusion, environmental sustainability, along with good governance. Now, the economic case is fairly simple and straightforward. Healthcare is costly and can push people into poverty, and this has been seen world over. In India, for example, in 2014, 55 million persons were pushed into poverty because of unaffordable healthcare expenditure. Of these, 38 million were due to the cost of medicines alone. And we also know that catastrophic health expenditure because of any unforeseen medical emergency, which calls for huge hospitalized costs, are commonplace in high-income countries and low-middle-income countries alike in the absence of universal health coverage. So providing universal health coverage ensures financial protection through risk pooling and reduction of out-of-pocket spending. It also ensures that households can avoid spending their disposable incomes on health care and can improve their overall welfare spending whether it is on good food and nutrition for the whole family and especially for the children or an education. The social case for linking health to sustainable development is also fairly clear. Achieving gender equality, for example, is a very important element of the sustainable development goals and is embodied in the goal number five. And respect for human rights, and particularly in terms of the right to health, is also intimately connected to good health, and gender equality. Health is a backbone for other social determinants, such as furthering quality education. If you're unhealthy, you cannot access good education, and therefore you lose your opportunity for good livelihoods and good income, which again determine your social status. And also, health is important for promoting an inclusive, peaceful, and just society, because if people are unhealthy, due to conflict situations or can create conflict situations because of mental ill health, then there can be problems in a society. And people who are tense and are worried about their health are not going to be very peaceful, comfortable citizens. Health and environment influence each other in very many ways. We know for certain that climate change, which is accelerating in this century, is already creating a large number of health problems. At the same time, extreme weather events and air pollution are also posing very many health threats in all regions of the world. But we do not often recognize that even our agriculture and food systems, particularly livestock and related deforestation, can also create a huge threat to environment because of the nature of the methane gas emission from the livestock, as well as the deforestation itself accelerating global warming and climate change. Climate change in turn can reduce our agricultural productivity in terms of reduced crop yields and also reduce the nutrient quality of several crops. So what we need are ecologically sustainable and climate resilient agriculture and food systems so that we can maintain crop diversity and dietary diversity, which is very important for health. At the same time, we must ensure that our cities are climate resilient and can weather some of the extreme climatic challenges and extreme weather events that we are likely to face in the future. And our cities also have to promote active means of transport so that people can adopt a healthy living as their part of their routine lifestyle so that we can actually prevent a large number of non-communicable diseases and ensure that physical activity is maintained throughout the life course in an uninterrupted manner. And we must ensure that all sources of indoor and outdoor pollution are addressed effectively so that our threat to health through unclean air entering our body 
hurting our lungs, hurting our blood vessels, and creating a large number of diseases which are eminently avoidable, that threat is minimized. But even hospitals and healthcare facilities which deal with illness can actually contribute to good environment by reducing their greenhouse gas emissions, which are quite substantial, and adopting green technologies to reduce their energy consumption. Also, biomedical waste is another area that these hospitals can actually reduce and contribute to our environmental goals. Good governance is absolutely essential for realization of every single sustainable development goal, but particularly becomes very important in the area of health because there are multiple sectors involved and multiple stakeholders involved. We must recognize that health challenges cannot be tackled in isolation, and they require the engagement of all stakeholders, the government, the civil society, academia, the media, and private industry to work together in order to achieve common agreed goals. Now, health in all policies is something that people have been talking about for a while, but Norway articulated it best by saying that every minister should be a health minister. Indeed, the WHO multi-sectoral action plan for prevention and control of non-communicable diseases is a very good example of involving stakeholders from all sectors. However, this kind of multi-sectoral engagement is critical for all areas of health, even beyond the NCDs, and that must actually become a very important area for of planning and action for every single country. So what do the SDGs mean, and how do they differ from the MDGs? The SDGs now address all the major determinants of health and ensure that there is a good interplay between the various health goals and as well as the various sustainable development goals in order to protect and promote health. The health goal itself adopts a life course approach to address the health needs at every stage of life. And universal health coverage provides a unified health systems platform for providing a wide range of health services while offering financial protection. This health system approach was completely missing in the earlier version of the Millennium Development Goals. And sexual and reproductive health services, which were resisted for inclusion in any of the global health goals because of ideological positions, have now actually been positioned in the health goal of the SDGs, which is a major victory for people who have been advocating for them for quite some time. Injuries and substance abuse also now find a place in the health goal alongside NCDs, which are a major addition. So when we look at the movement from MDGs to SDGs, we recognize that the MDGs principally focused on communicable diseases and maternal and child health, which were seen as problems of the poor countries and of the poor. But now we recognize that the addition of universal health coverage and non-communicable diseases makes the SDGs truly universal and applicable to all countries in all regions of the world. And we also see very prominent positioning of these new health domains in the targets that have been set within the health goal, which is SDG 3. For example, target 3.4 says that by 2030, we must all, in each country, reduce by one-third the premature mortality from non-communicable diseases, such as cardiovascular disease, diabetes, cancer, and chronic respiratory disease, through prevention and treatment, and also promote mental health and well-being. Again, mental health has been a highly neglected area and has been disconnected in the past from NCDs. Now that connection is being made. At the same time, in terms of target 3.8, you, the universal health coverage makes a very prominent appearance and says that we must achieve universal health coverage, including financial risk protection, access to quality essential health care services, and access to safe, effective, quality, and affordable essential medicines and vaccines for all. SDG 3, the health goal, is now gaining momentum and finding feet for implementation through 
the adoption of universal health coverage as WHO's flagship program by the Director General of WHO. Universal health coverage will be achieved when all people receive the quality health services they need without suffering financial hardship. The emphasis is being on all people, which means truly universal, with nobody left out, but vulnerable sections receiving particular attention. Quality health services, which are needed across the life course, but without suffering financial hardship. These elements will have, now have to be adopted by every single country as they journey towards universal health coverage. At the same time, our life course approach is now embodied in a recommitment to comprehensive primary health care. This was the call first given at Alma-Ata in 1978, but subsequently disease-specific programs splintered primary health care and made it a selective program of primary health care. Now the world in 2018 recommitted itself to comprehensive primary health care to bring in all health care needs into the primary health care arena. And primary health care itself is now becoming the lead for universal health coverage. So what we are really looking at now is a situation where universal health coverage and the social determinants of health together provide the unified foundation for achieving both an accelerated progress on the health MDGs, which continue to be reflected in the SDGs, as well as reduce the burden of major NCDs and mental health disorders, which now feature prominently among the health uh, targets of the SDG. So the idea here is to maximize healthy lives at all stages of life and achieve a healthy planet and in which healthy people can reside, which is the spirit embodying all of the SDGs. So as we see how medicine has evolved over the 20th century into public health, we see that in the 21st century, public health itself is being positioned in the overall ambit of sustainable development since public health is so critically vital to sustainable development at the same time, it draws its strength and sustenance from action in multiple sectors which act on multiple determinants of health, and they feature in the sustainable development agenda.